Welcome to Regarding Automobiles. My name is Phil. Today I'm going to show you how to use these parts to build your own custom adjustable control arms. No welding required. It's really easy to do and it's fun for the whole family. So let's get started. Regarding Automobiles, yeah. Everything I need to create four custom adjustable control arms for my 2006 Mini Cooper S is on the table here. Um, now the exact dimensions of everything will differ by car, but this the process itself really applies to any car. Our goal is to replace this, which is the factory control arm with rubber bushings, with something that's adjustable so we can actually adjust the length of it and maybe something that's a little stiffer. Um, and that way we get better performance on the track, which is what this car is gonna be built for. Now you don't have to go, I've gone for some stiff rod ends, but you don't have to. You can decide first, um, do you wanna just replace the, the factory bushings with something similar? Uh, do you wanna go with like a urethane bushing or do you wanna go with like really stiff rod ends? Uh, but that's the first thing you have to do is measure how long the factory one is. So then, um, once you figure that out, um, then there's, it's not like a set process, I guess. Um, I've gone for a brand name called QA1, uh, and they have a whole different, like, different lines of rod ends. Um, I went for the X series, which is like their sort of performance series. And if you go to their website, you can actually see all the exact dimensions. Like they have drawings of everything and all the, so these are the ones that I've chosen for my Mini. You may obviously have to do something different for your car. Now, what happens then is that you need, obviously, a bar that goes in the middle. In my case, for the my Mini, I've gone for a 17 inch bar. Uh, but again, you have to figure out how long the actual uh, rod end is that you're buying and how long the factory one is. But in this case, I've used the 17 inch. And on this, you actually have threaded, it's threaded on the inside. But one, hand, one is left-handed and one is right-handed. That way, when, you're in, when it's on the car, you can just put a wrench on it and you can loosen the ends and adjust it. And it makes the control arm shorter or longer and you can add camber to your rear wheels. So the actual process of building the control arms uh, is basically that you need two rod ends, one bar, two uh, stop nuts, and again those are le left and right handed. Uh, the left handed one actually has a little set of arrows on it, so you have a left handed and right handed. And then once you're going to install them, we have these offset spacers that will actually fill in the gap where the bushing used to be and give you full mobility inside, uh, but they're obviously st solid metal, so it's quite stiff. And the process is actually quite easy. I promise no welding, so this is the easy process. You take the left-handed thread or left-threaded uh, rod end and the left-threaded nut, and you put them together like this. You do the same for the right-handed one. Take the left-threaded tie rod and the left, the marked left threaded on the bar, thread it in, and do the same on the right hand side. And that is basically built. Okay, so that's the basics of it. Um, when you're deciding what, I guess, parts to choose, you should also understand that, you know, this car is obviously got all metric. Um, it's a lot cheaper and easier to find uh, Imperial or SAE components because, you know, they come out of the US. Um, so the, if you actually look at the factory bolt, for the control arm, it's a 12 millimeter and there's some play in there. Well, we're gonna put offset spacers in there anyway, which are these. And so they're just gonna slide in here. So they end up looking like that. And what they do is that they reduce the hole that's on the existing rod ends and step them down to the 12 millimeter. So there's no play on the bolt. And then I've had to, I had to sort of look around a lot for these um, because they take the SAE size, step them down to 12 millimeter, but also their total width once they're installed. So their total width across the tie rod here when they're installed um, is almost the same as um, the factory one. So I may have to put a washer or two in there, but the important part is that the offset is in there so there won't be any banging um, when the thing moves around because the offset gives it enough space. Well, there might still be some banging, but not because of that. 
So yeah, these I got from a um, off-roading site. I'll put a link again in the description for it. Um, that's usually who's using these, are people building custom tie rods for their off-roading vehicles. So that's where I was able to find it. So you have your control arm built. Uh, you have your offset spacers in there. Then you can just take the factory control arm, put the factory bolts in, and you can drop so you can see obviously it's not working. So I can just sort of shorten this. Okay, so now we're looking at the both rod ends fit over the factory bolt in the factory locations. Okay, so you put it down on the factory bolts. Um, I'll make sure, I'm just doing it for demonstration here, but I'll make sure the threads are similar uh, before tightening it down. But then you just take these lock nuts, stop nuts, and you tighten them on. So you just rotate them. And they actually lock it into place. So now you have a control arm that's the same. Oh, oh. Not even adjustable control arm um, that you can replace the factory with and you know add camber to your rear and get better traction on the track uh, i guess on the road in two but uh, i wouldn't recommend this style for the road i mean if you look at the well, soft but the rubber bushings in the factory one compared to what we're doing which is basically replacing it with just steel steel on steel especially with the spacers in there uh, and i know a lot of you are like i would never do that that's going to rattle my teeth out when i'm driving around yeah this car isn't designed to be comfy on the road um, eventually it's going to be you know eventually i'll gut it it's, it is a, a track focused car so that's why i'm going for the stiffest possible uh, suspension um, so i think that'll give me the best results now there are off-the-shelf options for adjustable control arms for the mini uh, there's like sort of less fancy ones like the doorman uh, there's some golden performance silver performance i think i've seen but they have the the poly bushings the big poly bushings uh, and then these probably most closely resemble the alta bars uh, they actually have tie rods, they have the offset spacers that come with them. Um, but in this case, uh, I've actually used a thicker bar, which is, means allows for a thicker thread. So these should actually be a little bit stronger than the Alta ones. Also, I know these QA ones, like uh, the tie rods, I know all the specs about them. Uh, so I know that they're high quality and they won't wear out. Uh, I don't know what are on the Alta. And the other thing is too, is um, the Alta ones in Canada, at least, are like 310 us dollars plus shipping so you're looking at close to a thousand canadian dollars <laughs> once it all gets here um, because you need two pairs or 310 a pair us um, and i actually got all this gear for about about 400 us now it depends on where you buy it uh, i'll put links to all the parts uh put my amazon links down the part so i'll make a, a couple bucks if you click on them but you can buy them all over the place all the major suppliers sell them so yeah they're cheaper, they're stronger, what's not to like? Um, again, I'm doing it for my Mini Cooper S, but you can do this for any car. Just, I, like I said, I've used a 17 inch bar. You would wanna make sure that you have enough thread left in the bar after you've attached everything, they, they're not gonna come out. Um, but yeah, you measure your own car, you can build your own. So yeah, I think that's, uh, that's a good project. I'll build the other four. And uh, you know, the next video I make is gonna be me putting the rear end back together with these fancy new control arms in there. So. You know, like and subscribe, and if you want, check out the other videos on the channel. And if you want to see me actually put the subframe back in, then stay tuned because that video should come out in the next couple weeks. Thanks for watching. See you next time.